Here at Summit Fund, we've discovered something that we wanted to come by and learn a little bit more about because it sounds very interesting to me from potentially a safety standpoint, but also for performance, and performance always gets pilots' attention. I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm talking with Michael Stock, who is associated with RS Aerotech, and you have a few different roles, but what we're talking, what we're focusing on now is gathering information and about the operation of this propeller. So Michael, tell me a little bit, let's start with the mm -hmm. propeller. Mm -hmm. uh, give me some description about what prop we're using and why that's important. Yeah, thank you for, for asking. So what we have here on this aircraft is an MTV 34 prop from Mühlbau, MT propeller. And that is a constant speed propeller okay. of modern technology. And we are using this propeller in order to maximize the thrust for this airplane going out of the water or off the runway. And at the same time, um, changing uh, the RPM in the air according to certain parameters to give the optimum performance in the air and uh, minimum fuel consumption. Okay, now a lot of people would know that yes, well that's what a constant speed prop does, but what they don't know is that typically with an in-flight adjustable prop there are some controls that you have to adjust or there's a, a prop lever and there's extra gauges you have to follow and you've eliminated most of that pilot workload. That is How correct. have you done that? Yeah, we have a very unique system here that is based on modern electronics and essentially on the Rotox 912 IS engine. Ah, this is an IS then, okay. This is an IS. So, so right there, so. Right, and this engine delivers a wealth of information over its data buses, so it has uh, numerous sensors. And we're using all that sensor information to generate uh, a formula that actually makes uh, control the, uh, the constant speed prop in terms of the RPM, and you as a pilot only have your power lever. It's a single lever constant speed propeller. So all you do as a pilot is you act on your, on your lever, you want to have full thrust, you go full forward and it will do it. And once you're in the air and you come back on your uh, power lever, then the RPM will be automatically adjusted to give you maximum speed and minimum uh, fuel consumption. So it all sounds very complicated with sensors and formulas and, mm -hmm. and collection of information and so forth, but to the pilot, this is very, very simple. I exactly. got a lever, a go lever, and a stop lever, or a slow down lever. Yeah. And all the pilot does is he's sitting in the water. It's obviously a seaplane here. We're looking at the Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray. So we've chosen the Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray because it's an aircraft with very nice flying characteristics, very docile, and it uh, makes a very good mount for power plant testing. So you can concentrate on testing the engine and the propellers, and the airplane would just fly. So it does it. And then also it's a seaplane and it's an amphibium, so we can especially. Uh, also um, put an emphasis on the seaplane operation because we have to overcome a lot of drag in the water. Right. So that constant speed prop helps a lot in that respect. Well, I'm thinking that, you know, very important for seaplane pilots is the amount of time in the water. Correct. It may be a, a boat, but it's really an airplane that's on the water and it wants to get off the water as quickly as possible. Right. And the longer it's in the water, the more abuse to the airframe from hitting waves and things like that. Exactly. So with a constant speed prop, you can get a lot more power. The engine is supplying the power, but you're applying a lot more of it to the motion of the aircraft. But that's a complex thing for a lot of people, so you've just simplified that a lot with what you did with the single lever control then. Right, so there's a computerized box in the, in the front. It's called the engine management unit. That will give, will give information to the pilot about the engine state, all the RPM, manifold pressure, CHTs, whatever you want. And at the same time, it does in the background do that RPM control. So as a pilot, you don't have to worry about that at all. You really only act on your power lever. You look at the, at the screen to see what the engine gives you, and this is it. Is there also, because I'm wondering how, when you, when you first push the throttle all the way forward, well, the engine knows, okay, I've got to run faster. But it, the engine doesn't know it's in the water, so. Correct. Is there a supply of airspeed information or other, other non-engine related data coming into this uh, power unit, this control unit? Yeah, on this aircraft we have a full flight test instrumentation, but it's not what that needs to be on the final aircraft. So okay, for, for that's running, just for your benefit to learn more. That's correct. Okay. But just for driving the propeller, the information that we get from the engine is fully sufficient. Okay. So we have all the parameters that we need according to, uh, to the charts that we get from MT propeller and from Rotex for the engine and the prop to do all the calculations to make it work under any conditions. So the pilot doesn't even have to care if it takes off on the water or on the land. It's always going to be full thrust on the ground to get, out, uh, to get off quickly. And it's always giving optimum speed and optimum uh, performance in the air. So the, the main source of information to the control application is then where the power lever is. 
Correct. you've got it full forward, it says, okay, mm -hmm. the engine's producing so much power at so much RPM, the prop says, okay, if I have that much power, I should spin, I should, I should adjust my pitch a little Correct. bit. Correct. We're optimizing thrust rather than power. So this that gives you the optimum thrust, and that is what you want. Okay. The pilot so wants thrust. It doesn't. It is not interested in RPM and not even in right. Power. Doesn't really care about the any pilot, of that. The pilot wants to be kicked back in the seat. <laughs> right. When he takes and off. get off the water quickly, yes, or off the off land the quickly too. Yeah, so that's a lot simpler. Normally the pilot has to kind of do these calculations mentally and go, well, I should probably increase right. my RPM and then I'll do something with my prop control or adjust mm -hmm. it however they adjust it. Right. And the pilot has a duty then that uh, mm -hmm. takes him away perhaps or her away from actually just flying the airplane. Exactly. And this way you just do what you want to do and right. it and thinks it through. And also this may differ from day to day. So depending on ah. your environmental conditions. If, if the uh, atmosphere the is different or something. The atmosphere is different and this may not be uh, the same thing as it was two days ago. Ah, so yeah. that engine delivers me also environmental data. So I have the ambient pressure and the ambient temperature. So I can calculate the optimum RPM also based on what the engine can deliver at any given time. It makes me think that an IS engine on an airplane with just a fixed pitch prop is not using all that information, that it has it, but it's not employing it anyway. Exactly. And in this case, case, you're making full use of the engine's capability, what's in the engine by itself, mm -hmm. and then what you know from the prop company. Very fascinating. Correct. That's the, that's the idea. So there's another side to this whole thing that you were telling me about. In addition to the single lever control and how nice that is for pilot workload, you're also sending information somewhere. Tell me something more about that, Michael. Uh, yeah, that's an it's another research project that's also in conjunction with uh, BRP Rotex. And uh, you know, from the big guys, Boeing and Airbus, they are transmitting engine data continuously to the ground in order to um, use this information in a database, do trend monitoring, and find out if an engine is about to develop a malfunction. So they're not letting this happen. And we are trying to bring this to the LSA world now. Beautiful. So what we do is... Which you now have that capability partly because of this engine, right? Exactly. Okay. So we have the, all this data. And this aircraft is equipped with a um, LTE transmission worldwide. So whenever it sees an LTE network, whenever it has a signal, it will transmit that information to a server where BRP Rotex has direct access to. I see, so okay. So they're building a database in order to find out if that engine will develop a problem eventually in the future and inform the pilot before this even happens. That seems kind of a remarkable that these devices are working in the background to say, I, I don't know what might go wrong, but there's something here that's not quite right. And you know what, Mr. Pilot or Mr. Aircraft Owner, you should take that thing to a service technician and find out if this component is starting to fail or something. Exactly. So we have two things here now that actually improves flight safety, and that is what we are focusing on. While making it simpler for the pilot. Yes. I love that exactly. part. Yeah, right. Pilot doesn't really have to mess with all of this stuff. Exactly. So. We want to reduce complexity and we want to increase safety. Um, is this a product just in uh, investigation now, or is this something that someone is going to end up selling. You're not, you don't sell the props and you don't sell the engines. No. So what are you going to do with all of this knowledge that you're acquiring about this, on this particular aircraft, Michael? Uh, so actually we are gathering the data. We operate the aircraft. We, we have the test pilots, the flight test engineers. We do the flight test plan. And the data goes to the three companies that are involved, which is BRP Rotex, the Progressive Aerodyne C-Ray, and MP ah, Propeller. Progressive Aerodyne is part of this as well, right. then. So that is, a, that is an experimental thing right now, but it should eventually go into the real product and there are plans that will come out very soon in order to make this happen on other on I was just going to ask you okay how long have you been working with this all this equipment right here uh, we've been working with this uh, since about three years oh okay and it took us one year from point zero to get this experimental aircraft here to that state at what we have it now and being flown and uh, ready for testing and who all is flying it as you gather this information one of one of your people or yeah we have uh, I'm one of the test pilots another from RS Aerotech is a test pilot then we have uh, two very experienced pilots from Progressive Aerodyne Kerry Richter and Dan Nickens that okay. will do the test flying and eventually there will also be somebody from uh, BRP Rotox on board. And so this is happening here in Florida then? That's where the Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray is built? That's correct. Yeah, part, uh, The most part of it is going to happen here in Florida and occasionally it's also going to be uh, flown to the Bahamas for saltwater testing. Oh, that's too testing. bad. That's, I'm sorry that's you have to do bad. that. You yeah, know. sorry. Um, uh, thank it's a you very difficult much. job you have. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's a dirty job, but somebody has to do it. <laughs> that's right. Now, MT Propellers, I think, has a base in Deland, Florida, too. Do they not? Yeah, that is correct. Okay, yeah. so, so is that where you're working with them or? 
Actually, we work with the with the company in Germany. So okay. we work with the direct companies. We work with BRP, Rotax in Austria. We work with uh, MT Propeller in Straubing, Germany, and we work with Progressive Aerodynes here here in Tavares, Florida. So this is a research work that involves all the engineering. And uh, however, the propeller came through D-Land, of course, and uh, they're supporting us in terms of the maintenance and all the other things, so they have an excellent uh, experience here. So every time that Carrie or Dan or the later the rest of you fly the airplane, information is being sent to the server about how the whole operation is working, is Correct. that right? Exactly. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, so people are watching this video going, oh, okay, well this sounds terrific. Mm -hmm. When can they get it? Well, I would say that um, in about a year from now, you will know more, and we try to put out more information uh, for the Oshkosh of this year. Ah, okay, and then, so you'll continue data collection for another year, right. applying and operating the aircraft and learning more about both the prop and the lever, con single lever control, and the data transmission, I presume. Exactly, and also, um, during the, the time to Oshkosh, this engine will be replaced by the new 915 IS. Ah, it will, okay, I was gonna get to that question next, thinking, right. well, that's an obvious choice, and a Correct. seaplane can always use more power, it seems. Yeah. And so more power and all those same sensors and everything else will, uh, maybe even more, mm -hmm. will be on the engine than on the 912 IS. Right, that's the plan. So uh, Progressive Aerodyne will put this 912 IS on another airplane from them. So that's for the valuable for flight testing and we will put the 915 IS on that. So you will see this airplane in Oshkosh with the 915 okay, IS. Okay, well it. we'll be looking for that at Oshkosh then with the new 915, which okay. is coming to market pretty soon we know. So this is Correct. all probably part of the uh, Rotax company's effort to learn more about their engine and to get actual use on it before they release exactly. it to the public. That's correct. Okay, very good. Um, Michael, you've given me a lot of great information. I'm sure some people would like to keep up with this somehow, even mm -hmm. before you start selling it to them. Can we direct them somewhere on the web that uh, they could keep track of how this is going? Or? I would say um, a good start is uh, maybe rsaerotech.com. Okay. And then um, the next would be cray.com. And that's be the main sources where you will find information. Okay, very that's soon. where users should go to find out stuff. Exactly, okay. and then flyrotex.com will eventually have something covered as well. Okay, great. Well, I think I've asked you all the questions I can think of. Anything you want to add about this development? Um, I think it's pretty much all I have to say about that. So we we're going to have fun flying now, and we deliver as much data as we can, and try to improve flight safety as good as we can. Well, I look forward to hearing more about that. It's a fascinating project. Congratulations on that. Okay. Lots of information that. about the Sea Ray. Lots of information about the Rotex, and more to come about mm -hmm. the single lever control. You can find that in all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Michael Schock and myself here at Sun and Fun.